I'm Josh T. Pearson for Blue's Kitchen. Once you get to know me, I'm a nice bunch of guys. Josh T. Pearson released his debut album, Last of the Country Gentlemen, back in 2011. After seven years in the wilderness, the Texan-born musician returns clean-shaven, armed with electric guitars and a playful new sound. Josh discusses his new record, The Straight Hits, and performs a cover of George Strait's When Did You Stop Loving Me. And while you're watching, subscribe to the channel for weekly episodes of The Blues Kitchen Presents. Josh T. Pearson, welcome to The Blues Kitchen. How are you doing? I'm okay. I've been worse. Been worse? Yeah. And how's the uh, hangover from last night's show? It's still hanging on. I <laughs> said we got a, it's our first bus tour ever, and um, it's a blessing and a curse. The, the bar bus never stops, so uh, I got to learn to pace myself. I quit drinking for seven years. I then started again a few years ago. Mama didn't raise no quitter, and uh, I can usually regulate it pretty good now. I don't get violently angry like before, which is good. But the, the recovery time is just not as great as when you're a young, handsome age like yourself. So. But you're on top of it. Uh, Still playing Somewhere in the middle. I like to get in the middle of things, I guess. I'd very much like to ask you about your new album. You would? I would. That's why we're here, but right? To do that, I think we're going to have to go back to your first record okay. to kind of give it some kind of reference. So. Last of the Country Gentlemen. Last of the Country Gentlemen came out about seven or eight years ago. Yeah, 2011. Got like 10 out of 10 reviews yeah. across the board. Yeah. Barnstorming tour. Yeah. And then quiet for quite a long time. Yeah. So what happened in that time? Well, I, I got tired. I needed to go recover for about five years. It was a real heartbreaking album. I just, uh, yeah, I needed to sort my shit out. So I went back to Texas and... Uh, was out in the woods for about a year, and then I started going to Austin and uh, discovered this great honky tonk there called the White Horse. Mm -hmm. And I that's chicken shit bingo, shit. right? I think they do chicken shit at Sea Boys now, but it's uh, similar. There's I don't know five ten honky tonks around there, but uh, White Horse is uh, that was a actually been on the, the show with us. Oh, he has. Yeah, yeah. Good. Tell him I said hello. Tell him I want my fifteen dollars back. <laughs> What, what does he owe you 15 bucks for? Um, none of your god dang business. <laughs> um, so yeah, you moved back to Austin, get into playing at the Honky Tonk again, down yeah. the White Horse. Yeah, I just started going there, and I got hair cut and beard cut and introduced color into my life, started eating veggies and doing stretches. Shows, you're looking good. Thank you, not so bad yourself. <laughs> uh, maintaining, you know, just maintenance and stuff. I kind of set my life on a trajectory of doing things that were a little more constructive and de deconstructive and allowing myself to receive benefits and blessings of things rather than self-sabotage and stuff. I went through some counseling with the ex who that record was about mm -hmm. uh, to try to sort out our shit to see what, uh, how two best friends could end up hating each other. We're just trying to figure out what happened where you want to, you know, you're hand in hand, let's do this for the rest of our life and then you, you dream about killing each other. You want to uh, try to figure out the mistakes you made so you wouldn't make it again in the next. Anyway, let's talk about something else. So, so we moved on. Stuff. Yeah, so and, uh, I'd like to know about these five pillars that you put in place for a yeah, new Yeah, those are just are kind of arbitrary. I was trying to look at something avant-garde to my uh, normal avant-garde nature. I'm coming from a more post-rock, artful background mm -hmm. growing up as a kid playing psych rock and stuff, and uh, I had just finished a writing process for a month and a half where it was really heavily involved. I write all the time, I just never put out. My previous stuff is always more theater, performance art, live mm -hmm. shows and stuff, and kind of switching over to Hollywood, I guess. I kind of want to leave a trail now. Should I, we just go over the five pillars? Yeah, sure. So, I've got them written down here. You say, number one, all songs must have a verse, a chorus, and a bridge. Two, lyrics must run 16 lines or less. Three, they must have the word straight in the title, which is one of the key themes here. Yeah. Um, that title must be four words or less. And five, they must submit to the song above all else. Yeah, I think that fifth one, that fifth one is a rule I always go by. I think that's good in, in any art. Listen to the art and do what she tells you, you know. And how often did you break these rules? 
Uh, we pretty I broke rigid. the one track, the love song, was when that, that she really called back and said, uh, spend some more time with me, you know. So I did. So I really, I mean, I wrote the record in two days, but three days, including. You wrote the record in three days? Yeah. That's remarkable. Well, I mean, it is, but they're not. There's not a lot of subtext in the songs. And I've been writing for 30 years, so if I don't suck by now, I need to do something else, you know. <laughs> there were probably 15 songs that came out of those three days. One's called A Boy Named Straight. A couple long-form songs that didn't end up on it. That one broke the rule, too, because it's about 10 minutes long. <laughs> as a comedy song, like a modern boy version of Boy Named Sue. Uh, but it didn't have a place on the record. So really two days for the bulk, and then that, that third song, the love song, really said, you know, come back. So there's a and that's the one tune on the record I really I care about, uh, where I kind of drop my guard for a second. So where you broke the rules is where you've kind of fallen in love with the track the most, ironically. Yeah, I mean, I like all those tunes for what they are. They're fun, they're quick, immediate. They're totally departure from my other stuff, and I can write like that anytime I want, which is nice, but again, after years of trying, but uh, it's nice to not be so self-involved. And it's nice to have those parameters, like the verse, chorus, and the bridge. I, I never... That's just not something I operated within mm. before. So that, those sort of structures were more avant-garde for me, you know. How have you found the audience on this tour have been reacting? Because I imagine you're still playing tracks from the old record and playing with the band, I understand, as well. Is there a wild contrast in the show, or have the old songs come back to life and you're taking them a little less seriously? Well, I couldn't, I couldn't run those tunes for two or three years. Ah, oh, man, I just, it brought, took me to it a place I couldn't inhabit. And then about a year ago, I found that I could do it again, where I could conjure the same vibration, but not completely get swallowed up in it. Five, 10 minutes after the show, I'm back to this Josh, or whatever form it is. So yeah. once you get to know me, I'm a nice bunch of guys. <laughs> but I don't really know what I'm doing here. There's no 10 year plan. I'd like to just put out a record. I'd like to start putting records out like one a year for the next 10 years and just start flooding out. I got another one recorded with the Texas Gents. It was a, a comedy album, you know, totally different. Uh, like this hee-haw punk rock comedy thing called Controversy. I've got some other heartbreak songs I'd like to get out there, but I'm just, I'm having fun right now playing with these guys and it's been a real joy to not be alone up on stage and I'm in a much better headspace where I feel like I can, there's manageable parts, you know. You're going to do a cover for us in just a moment. I am. straight. Yeah. Um, when did you stop loving me? Which is a tune I didn't know. Until You're not alone. Over. You know, he's sold more records than Rolling Stones. He's Whoa. A, yeah, it's, we have this pop country over there. There's country singers who, they just choose the tunes and sing. Other people write them. He's got like a hundred number one hits. Oh my God. Hasn't written a single one, but they call him <laughs> King George. There's American pop culture, you know. And I, my take is a little different. But of course. But uh, what I was going to say is like there's this <coughs> wonderful kind of movement or collective of artists at the moment, like Margot Price right. and Tyler yeah. Charles, you had on the show a little while ago, and then and they're the ones that make it over here. Yeah. But it is invisible to us. It's the kind of pop country side of yeah. That's of America. probably better that way. <laughs> no, um, most of it's not good. The pop stuff. I mean, it's good for the masses, and don't get me wrong. It greases the wheel. It's America. We have this tradition now in Texas that if you grew up playing punk rock, you end up playing a country band, you know, it's just, it's old, just gut music, deep calls on the deep, and yeah, uh, I guess that's what's happened to me, we were trying to go for this country version of the Bad Seeds, in my head, with this new Texas existentialist, I'm calling it, uh, <laughs> that's brilliant, yeah, I think it's pretty clever, yeah, pretty good that, nice, well, seen worse days, when, um, <coughs> when did you first hear, when did you stop loving me? I mean, is it one of these things that's just on the radio incessantly? Yeah, man, it's just like when you've got, I don't know, whatever in the, any shop you walk in here, it's just part of the ether, that pop country stuff. You go into the gas stations, you, and you're pumping your gas, and they're just blasting. Cool, um, man. Well, I reckon it's time for performance. Is that all right? Good. This is a cover of a George Strait song, When Did You Stop Loving Me? When... Did you stop loving me? How long have I been on memory? Oh, I got a hole for my own sanity. 
Darling, when did you stop 